Praise the Lord. Jesus Christ is Emmanuel. It is something you establish in your heart. We are all the body of Christ. And unity is our strength. Na umoja ndio nguvu yetu. In this movement. Katika haya tunayoyafanya. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now we can go straight to the word. Sasa tutaweza kwenda moja kwa moja kwenye neno. Uh, we shall read in the book of 2 Kings chapter 13. Tutasoma kitabu cha wafalme wa pili sura ya 13. From verse 14 to 19. Kuanzia mstari wa 14 mpaka wa 19. Nitasoma wafalme wa pili sura ya 13 mstari wa 14 mpaka 19 naomba utanifuata na Biblia yako. Basi Elisha alikuwa ameshikwa na ugonjwa wake uliomuua. Naye Yehoashi mfalme wa Israel akateremka amtazame, akamlilia mbele yake akasema, "Baba yangu, baba yangu, gari la Israeli na wapanda farasi wake." Elisha akamwambia, "Toa uta na mshale." Naye akatoa uta na mishale akamwambia mfalme wa Israeli weka mkono wako katika uta naye akaweka mkono wake juu yake Elisha akaweka mikono yake juu ya mkono wa mfalme akasema lifungue dirisha linaloelekea mashariki akalifungua basi Elisha akasema piga akapiga akasema mshale wa Bwana wa kushinda naam mshale wa kushinda sham kwa maana utawapiga wa sham katika afeki hata utakapowaangamiza akasema itwaye mishale akaitwa akamwambia mfalme wa Israeli piga chini akaipiga chini mara tatu akaacha yule mtu wa Mungu akamkasirikia akasema angalia igali kupasa kupiga mara tano au mara sita ndipo ungaliipiga sham hata kuiangamiza basi sasa utaipiga sham mara tatu tu Father we give you praise Baba tunakupa sifa. Father we say thank you. Baba tunasema Father Baba tunasema asante. As we stand here before your congregation. Tunaposimama hapa mbele ya kusanyiko lako. We want to thank you and appreciate the vision that you brought to us. Tunataka kukushukuru na kukushukuru kwa maono ambayo umetuletea. We did not deserve anything oh God. Hatukustahili chochote e Mungu. We were not worthy oh Lord. Hatukustahili Bwana. But by your grace. Lakini kwa neema yako. You came. Ulikuja. And you visited us oh God. Na ukatutembelea. And you spoke to us oh God. Na ukanena nasi e Mungu. Not only for us. Sio tu kwa ajili yetu. But for all the people. Bali kwa watu wote. People of near and people of far. Watu walio karibu na watu walio mbali. And you spoke about nations. Na ukazungumza kuhusu mataifa. You spoke about East Africa. Ukazungumza kuhusu Afrika ya Mashariki. You spoke about Europe. Ukazungumza kuhusu Ulaya. You spoke about Asia. Ukazungumza kuhusu Asia. You spoke about America. Ukazungumza kuhusu Marekani. And you gave us your heart na ukatupa moyo wako concerning this nation kuhusiana na mataifa hayo it was hard to believe ilikuwa ni ngumu kuamini because we were just without strength kwa sababu hatakuwa na nguvu normal christians wa kristo wa kawaida But you spoke to us oh God. Lakini ulizungumza nasi ya Mungu. We were so shocked to see that you can come and talk to us. Tulishtushwa sana kuona ya kuwa waweza kuja But na kuzungumza today nasi. We are standing here. Lakini leo tumesimama to hapa. We appreciate your faithfulness. Kukushukuru uaminifu wako. We are standing here. Tumesimama hapa. To appreciate you Lord. Kukushukuru wewe Bwana. Your love. Upendo your wako. Care. Kujali kwako ulinzi wako if it was not for your name sake kama isingalikuwa kwa ajili ya jina lako tungekuwa tumekufa leo e Mungu but today 18 years after lakini leo miaka 18 baadaye we are standing before this congregation tumesimama mbele ya kusanyiko hili to keep on talking about you kuendelea kuzungumza kuhusu wewe alone, na wewe pekee e Mungu this is our tenth and this is our tenth echo conference na huu ni mkutano wetu wa kumi wa echo father baba we thank you tunakushukuru what you have given us kwa kile ulichotupa a big present zawadi kuu to take us father kutupeleka mbali in this calling katika wito huu we shall press on tutaendelea mbele we shall press on tutaendelea mbele by your grace we shall press on kwa neema yako tutaendelea toward our destiny of god fika kwenye mustakabali wetu we believe na tuamini that you continue kwamba utaendelea giving us grace kutupa neema 
to fulfill this mandate. Kuweza kutimiza jukumu hili. Tunasema asante. We bless your people. Tunawabariki watu wako. I pray that you give them spiritual eyes. Ninaomba ya kuwa utawapa macho ya kiroho waone kile unachokifanya. I pray that you give them spiritual ears. Aomba ya kwamba utawapa masikio ya kiroho. Wasikie sauti yako. And we cover ourselves by your blood. Na tuwajifunika kwa damu yako. And we pray Holy Spirit. Na tunaomba Roho Mtakatifu. Come and minister with us. Njoo na hudumu pamoja nasi. Give us utterance oh God. Utupe kutamka e Bwana. And let us be transformed tonight. Na utuachie tubadilishe jioni ya leo. Let us be ready. Na uturuhusu to go oh God. Kuweza kwenda. And impact nation. Na kuyagusa mataifa. For the glory of your holy name. Kwa ajili ya utukufu wa jina lako takatifu. We know that we don't have Tunajua ya kwamba hatuna muda. We know that you are coming back. Tunajua ya kuwa unarudi. Give us courage. Tupe ujasiri. Not to waste time. Tusipoteze muda. Oh hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. Asante Yesu. Thank you Lord. Asante Bwana. Thank you Jesus. Asante Yesu. Clap for Jesus. Pigie Bwana Yesu makofu. Pigie Bwana Yesu makofu. Pigie Bwana Yesu makofu. Yuko hapa jioni ya leo. Yuko hapa. Yuko hapa. Clap for the Holy Spirit. Mpigie makofi roho mtakatifu yuko hapa nasi As we minister the word uh, tunapo uh, lihudumu neno la Mungu I will also share uh, pia nitashiriki the dream the Lord gave me uh, ndoto ambayo Bwana alinipa yesterday night jana usiku for today kwa ajili ya leo Yesterday we spoke about the potter's house Jana tulizungumza kuhusu mfinyanzi. And the topic is still the same. Na mada bado ni ile ile. Rebuilding God's people. Kuwajenga upya watu wa Mungu. To impact nations. Ili kuyagusa mataifa. So we may ask ourselves. Kwa hiyo tuweze kujiuliza. After building. Baada ya kujenga. Why should we should we rebuild again? Kwa nini tujenge tena upya? And I took you to Jeremiah 18. Na nikawapeleka katika kitabu cha Yeremia sura ya 18. Where God took Jeremiah in the house of a potter. Ambapo Mungu alimpeleka Yeremia katika nyumba ya mfinyanzi. And Jeremiah saw that the potter was uh, making a, a vase. Na Yeremia alimuona yule mhunzi akitengeneza chombo. Alikuwa akikitengeneza chombo. Akikipa sura. And it took time. Na ilichukua muda. But at the end of the day, lakini mwisho wa siku, when Jeremiah saw that the vase was ready, Yeremia alipokiona kile chombo kilikuwa tayari, he saw in the face of the potter that he was not happy. Aliona yule mfinyanzi ya kwamba hakuwa na furaha na kazi aliyoifanya. He was not satisfied. Hakuridhika of the outcome na matokeo the shape na lile umbo of that vase la kile chombo and he did not want to sell it na kutaka kukiuza because he will sign his name on it kwa sababu angeweka sahihi ya jina lake kwenye kile chombo and he does not want to put his name on a vase that he does not like na hataki kuweka jina lake katika chombo ambacho hakitaki it will spoil his reputation itaharibu hadhi yake So he did not care about the time he spent. Hakujali kuhusu muda aliyotumia kufanya kazi. Jeremiah says that he saw that he was ready to break it. Jeremia anasema alimuona ya kwamba yule mfinyanzi alikuwa tayari kukivunja na kuanza upya. Tell your neighbor. Mwambie jirani yako. Don't be afraid to start afresh. Usihofu kuanza tena. In this journey, katika safari hii, we can make mistakes. Tuweza fanya makosa. But we should be ready to start and start and start again. Lakini tuwe tayari kuanza na kuanza na kuanza tena. Because our God, kwa sababu Mungu wetu, is the God of perfection. Ni Mungu wa ukamilifu. Until he see you perfect. Mpaka atakapokuona wewe kuwa mkamilifu. He will not be tired to mold you again. Hata choka kukuumba tena. He is the God of perfection. Ni Mungu wa ukamilifu. That's why he broke it. Ndio maana alikivunja. And then God spoke to Jeremiah. Alafu Mungu akazungumza na Yeremia. Will I not do it? Je, sitafanya hivyo? With my people? Na watu wangu? Will I not make it? Je, sita kitengeneza hivyo? He, I call you. Muona nimekuita. To destroy. Kuangamiza. To break. Kuvunja. And to rebuild again. Na kujenga tena. Praise the Lord. Bwana Yesu apewe sifa.
Apostle Paul said it again. Mtume Paulo alisema hayo tena. Who are you son of man? Wewe ni nani mwana wa Adamu? That you should argue with your maker. Kwamba uwe na malumbano na muumba wako. He decided to make you. Anapoamua kukuumba. He did not ask for advice. Hakuomba ushauri wowote. He is the one who knows. Yeye ndiye ajuae. Why he created you? Kwa nini amekuumba? And when he sees that you are not making it. Na anapokuona ya kwamba huendelee When he sees that the purpose is not fulfilled. Anapoona ya kwamba madhumuni hayatimii. He break you down. Anakuvunja. As he did with Paul. Kama alivyofanya kwa Paulo. He was persecuting Christians. Alikuwa akiwatesa wa Kristo. Yet he was called to be an apostle of Jesus. Lakini bado aliitwa kuwa mtume wa Yesu. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know about your name. Sijui kuhusu jina lako. I don't know the name they used to give you. Sijui ni jina gani walikuwa wakikupa. Some years back. Miaka iliyopita. But then, let me tell you. Lakini ngoja nikwambie. There is another name coming. Liko jina jingine linakuja. A name. A jina. A name. Jina. That will fulfill the reputation of God. Ambalo litatimiza kile ambacho ni cha Mungu. A name that matches with the purpose of God. Jina linaloendana na madhumuni ya Mungu. Over your life. Juu ya maisha yako. I never thought mimi sikuwahi kuwaza. I could never imagine. Wala nisingeweza kufikiri. Even if there was a prophet. Hata kama kungekuwa na nabii. Who would come and tell me you will be a pastor? Ambaye angekuja na kuniambia wewe utakuwa mchungaji. I'm not talking about an apostle. Siongei kuhusu mtu kuhusu utume. I would say that this person is looking for money. Hapo ningesema huyu mtu anatafuta fedha. I had another idea of myself. Nilikuwa na wazo jingine kuhusu mimi. In the mind of God. Lakini katika nia ya Mungu. He knew that one day he would break me down. Alijua ya kwamba siku moja atanivunja na kunitengeneza tena kuwa mtumishi wake bwana yesu asifiwe bwana asifiwe na huu ni mwaka wa kujenga upya i told you about a man niliwaambia kuhusu mtu named job aliyekuwa akiitwa ayubu chapter 1 of his life Kiangalia sura ya kwanza ya maisha yake. Biblia inasema alikuwa ni mtu mwenye heshima na kuheshimika. Mtu aliyemcha Mungu. Mtu ambaye alikaa mbali na dhambi. A giver. Mtoaji. And God has blessed him. Na Mungu alimbariki. He had a lot of possessions. Alikuwa na mali tele. Seven sons. Alikuwa na wana wa kiume saba mabinti watatu and so many servants na watumishi wengi he was a blessed man alikuwa ni mtu aliyebarikiwa but he had a good heart lakini pia alikuwa na moyo mzuri zaidi ya mali alizokuwa nazo but the chapter one lakini sura ya kwanza showed the blessings and how he was a happy man inaonyesha baraka na jinsi alivyokuwa mtu mwenye furaha so at the end of chapter one lakini unapoenda karibu na mwisho wa sura ya kwanza there was a gathering in heaven kukawa na kusanyiko kule mbinguni i don't know how the devil also went sijui shetani naye aliingia vipi in the gathering katika ule mkusanyiko everyone was giving the report kila mtu alikuwa akitoa taarifa and the lord god na, na bwana mungu asked him akamuuliza and you na wewe where did you go umetokea wapi ulienda wapi also went to to earth akasema na mimi nilienda duniani i was just going to and fro <laughs> nilikuwa nazunguka tu huko huku na kule and god asked him na mungu akamuuliza did you see my servant job je ulimuona mtumishi wangu wa yubu on earth there is no one like him kule duniani hakuna mtu kama yeye can you imagine god boasting after your life hebu ufikiria mungu akijivunia maisha yako the devil said Ashetani akasema Why will he not be happy? Why will he not be a man after your heart? Kwa nini asiwe mtu ambaye anaupendeza moyo wako? Why will he not bless you? Kwa nini asikubariki? Why will he not be a man who fear God? Kwa nini asiwe mtu ambaye anamcha Mungu? Because you have blessed him. Kwa sababu umenibariki. You know what? Unajua nini? There are things the devil don't know. Kuna vitu ambavyo shetani havijui. Because in the mind of the devil. Kwa sababu katika nia ya shetani. The greatness of Job was in his possessions. Ukuu wa Ayubu ulikuwa katika mali zake. And when he wants to make people great. Na anapotaka kuwafanya watu wakuu. He give them blessings. Anawapa baraka. As a snake. 
kama mtego. So he sought even with Job. Kwa yeye akafikiri hata kwa Ayubu. Because the Bible say that he was a great man. Sasa Biblia inasema alikuwa ni mtu mkuu. And the devil thought that the greatness was because of the possession. Sasa shetani akawaza kuwa ukuu ni kwa sababu ya mali. That's what he believed in. Ndicho alichoamini. And he said. Na akasema. Just allow those possessions to go away. Hebu ruhusu tu hizo mali ziondoke. This man will cut you in the face. Mtu huyo atakulaani usoni mwako. And now I was shocked. Nikastushwa. How can God allow devil to come and attack his children? Mungu awezaje kumruhusu shetani kuja na kuwashambulia watoto wake? Na Mungu akasema, Go ahead. Endelea. Don't touch him. Simguse. I like the last one. Ninapenda ya mwisho. I told you yesterday. Nilikwambia jana, When the waves of the sea are coming. Uh, mawimbi ya bahari yanapokuja. They will come with power and strength. Yatakuja na nguvu kubwa. But guess what? Lakini unafikiri God nini? Has ordained a limit. Mungu alishaweka kizingiti. If you go to Dar es Salaam. Ukienda Dar es Salaam. For years and years and years. Kwa miaka na miaka na miaka. The flow will come. Mawimbi yanakuja. The waves will come. Mawimbi yanakuja. But God has established a limit. Lakini Mungu tayari alishaweka mstari. They will come like this. Yatakuja kwa nguvu. Strength of the limit of God. Lakini nguvu ya kile kizuizi alichokiweka Mungu utaona yenyewe yanarudi. Then they will come again. Yanakuja tena, alafu yanarudi. This is how the devil is working. Ndivyo shetani anavyofanya kazi. He has a limit over your life. Naye ana kizuizi dhidi ya maisha yako. Things he will be obliged to do. Kuna vitu ambavyo atapaswa kuvifanya. There are things he will try to do. Kuna vitu atajaribu kuvifanya. But there is a limit. Lakini kuna mstari. Tell your neighbor there is a limit. Mwambie ndugu yako kuna mstari, kuna kikomo. In one day, katika siku moja, four bad news came. Zikaja habari nne mbaya. The possession were gone. Mali zilikwenda. The servants were gone. Watumishi wamekwenda. His children died. Watoto wake wamekufa. Calamity. Hiyo ilikuwa ni other two. But what amazed me? Lakini kilichonishangaza. He removed his clothes. Akatoa mavazi yake. Cut his hair. Akakata nywele zake. He bowed down. Na akalala chini. I came alone on this earth. Nimekuja peke yangu katika ulimwengu nitaondoka peke yangu. May the name of the, the Lord be glorified. Basi na jina la Bwana libarikiwe. May he be blessed. Na yeye abarikiwe. Instead of casting God he blessed Badala God. Badala ya kumlaani Mungu akambariki Mungu. The devil went back again in heaven. Shetani akarudi tena mbinguni. Because you see? Mungu akamwambia umeona? He said no 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 no. Shetani akasema hapana. Possessions, children, it's nothing. Mali watoto hiyo sio kitu. I think if you touch his body. Na vikiri ukigusa mwili wake. If you touch his flesh and bone. Ukigusa mwili wake na mifupa yake. He will curse you. Huyu atakulaani. And God said. Na Mungu akasema. Go ahead. Endelea. God knew. Mungu alijua. The greatness of Job. Ukuu wa Ayubu. Is not in his possession. Hauko katika mali zake. The greatness of Job. Ukuu wa Ayubu. Is not in his health. Hauko katika afya yake. The greatness of Job. Ukuu wa Ayubu. Was his heart. Ulikuwa ni moyo wake. And the devil could not touch there. Na shetani hakuweza kufika huko. May your greatness be in your heart. Basi na ukuu wako ukae katika and moyo wako. And not in your possession. Na sio katika mali zako. May your reputation be from your heart. Na ule umaarufu wako na hadhi yako itokee katika moyo wako ndipo hapo adui hawezi kugusa futa ufalme wa Mungu na haki yake na haya yote mali blessing baraka reputation sifa kubwa jina kubwa itufaje chochote kitakufuata haleluya haleluya so for many chapters kwa sura nyingi we see how he was suffering tunaona jinsi ambavyo aliteseka until the wife came and said paka mkewe akaja akamwambia why don't you cast god and wewe kwa nini usimlaani mungu kafa because the enemy entered the heart of the wife kwa sababu adui aliingia katika moyo wa mke wake bringing the word of curse akileta neno la laana why don't you cast god and kwa nini usimlaani mungu ufe but job said lakini ayubu akasema this is foolishness huu ni upumbavu you are not supposed to talk about this thing utakiwi kuongea kuhusu mambo haya god has blessed us kama mungu ametubariki if we love god kama tunampenda mungu because of all the good things he did to us kwa sababu ya mema yote aliyotendea will we not love him even in bad situations je hatutampenda pia katika hali ngumu this is a great man na huyu ni mtu mkuu this is a great man huyu ni mtu mkuu God in all circumstances. Ambaye alimpenda Mungu katika mazingira yote. It was not enough. Kama vile haikutosha. The devil invited all his friends. Shetani akakaribisha marafiki zake wote. And they came. Na wakaja. They cried when they saw him. Wakalia walipomuona. But then after. Lakini baadaye. They started judging him. Wakaanza kumhukumu. 
The enemy will attack you. Adui atakushambulia. He will attack you. Atakushambulia. In different ways. Katika njia mbalimbali. You will lose your possessions. Utapoteza mali zako. You may lose things. Utapoteza vitu. Even friends. Hata marafiki. They will be against you. Watakuwa dhidi yako. Because of the vision. Kwa sababu ya maono. But keep, keep it up. Lakini endelea. For many 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 chapters. Kwa sura nyingi sana. They were trying to convince him. Walikuwa wakijaribu kumshawishi. That this is the harvest of your sin. Kwamba hapa unavuna matokeo ya dhambi zako. But Job said. Lakini Ayubu alisema. One thing I know. Jambo moja ninalojua. My redeemer lives. Mtetezi wangu anaishi. He put his trust in him. Aliweka tumaini lake kwake. He did not use his mouth. Na wala hakutumia kinywa chake. Kumlaani Mungu. Lakini ngoja nikwambie. Ilifika wakati. Why he did not want to hear to hear the mind of people. Pale ambapo hakutaka kusikia mawazo ya watu. When you are in problem, unapokuwa kwenye matatizo, everyone will become a specialist. Kila mtu anakuwa mtaalamu. To explain. Kukuelezea. Why you have that problem? Kwa nini una hilo tatizo? You don't know her. Wewe umjui huyu. You don't know him. Wewe umjui yule. He pretend to be a man of God. Yeye anajidai ni mtu wa Mungu. He pretend to be a woman of God. Anajidai ni mwanamke wa Mungu. But why did God allow this? Lakini kwa nini Mungu aliruhusu hivi? For sure there are hidden agenda. Hapa Bwana kuna vitu vya siri vimefichika. People so many nasty things. Watu watasema vitu vingi vibaya. I just know that your, your redeemer lives. Lakini jua tu ya kwamba mkombozi wako anaishi. He reached a point he wanted to hear from God. Akafika wakati alitaka kusikia kutoka kwa Mungu. And when you are going through tough time in the spirit. Na unapopitia nyakati ngumu katika roho. It is not even easy to hear the word of God. Wala si rahisi kulisikia neno la Mungu. Let's to hear the voice of God. Wala kuisikia sauti ya Mungu. For many chapters. Kwa sura nyingi. He was longing for God to speak to him. Alikuwa akitamani Mungu azungumze naye. He reminds me Jesus. Ananikumbusha kuhusu Yesu. When God turned his back toward Jesus. Mungu alipogeuza Uh, uso wake uh, kwa Yesu He cried Hallelujah My God Mungu wangu My God Mungu wangu Why have you forsaken Mbona umeniacha There is a time Uko wakati You look for the voice of God Utaitafuta sauti ya Mungu You think that God has abandoned Utafikiri Mungu amekuacha But the word says Lakini neno linasema He will never leave you <coughs> Kamwe hata kuacha He will never forsake you Wala hata kupungukia Anyway toward the 38th chapter Nilipofika karibu na sura ya 38 God revealed himself to Job Mungu akajifunua kwa Ayubu And from chapter 42 Na kuanzia sura ya 42 The last chapter Sura ya mwisho Only the last chapter Sura ya mwisho pekee Short like this Fupi tu Job said Ayubu akasema I have heard about you Nilisikia kuhusu wewe Now lakini sasa nimekuona This ministry Duma hii The vision of this ministry Maono ya huduma hii is to seek God ni kumtafuta Mungu so that we may be able to see him ili tuweze kumuona But are you ready to pay the price Lakini huko tayari kulipa gharama to see him ili kumuona Many chapters Sura nyingi He went through alipitia But the last one Lakini ya mwisho And I thank God for the last one Na mimi namshukuru Mungu kwa ajili ya mwisho Alikiri na kusema I have heard about you Nilikusikia nilisikia kuhusu wewe lakini sasa I have seen you Nimekuona And this is why God allowed the devil Na ndio maana Mungu alimruhusu shetani to go and attack Job. Aende amshambulie Ayubu. Because God knew the heart of Job. Kwa sababu Mungu alijua moyo wa Ayubu. He knew that the greatness of his, this man was in his heart. Alijua ya kwamba ukuu wa mtu huyu ulikuwa ndani ya moyo wake. He wanted to lift him high. Na alitaka amuinue juu. So, ili that reputation that job of the past ile hadhi ile ile ayubu wa, wa kale and job after seeing god na ayubu baada ya kumuona mungu he was totally different walikuwa ni wawili tofauti he was promoted alikuwa ameinuliwa hallelujah hallelujah after seeing god baada ya kumuona mungu you can never be the same uwezi kuwa kama ulivyokuwa after you have find him baada ya kuwa umempata you will be transformed utabadilishwa there, 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 there will be another realm that you never knew utakuwa na ulimwengu mwingine wa kiroho ambaye hujawahi kufahamu alikuwa ni mtu mwenye hofu alimhofu Mungu alimchambua alikuwa ni mtu wa heshima na hadhi lakini hakuwa mkamilifu hakuwa mkamilifu ni baada ya kuona utukufu wa Mungu aliweza kukiri mimi ni mwenye dhambi praise the lord bwana asifiwe jesus appeared to me Yesu alimtokea on the 17th of April tarehe ile ya 17 mwezi wa 4 saa 3 mapema kabisa akasema 
wale saa tisa samani wale wanaonitafuta they will find me watanipata those who seek me wanitafutao they will find me watanipata but lakini they should remove their shoes wavue viatu vyao There are so many things we need to remove in our life. Kuna mambo mengi tunahitaji kuyaondoa maisha yetu. The work of the flesh. Kazi ya mwili. The lust of the eye. Tamaa ya macho. The pride of life. Kiburi cha uzima. All these things. Vitu hivi vyote. They may prevent you and me to see God. Vyaweza kukuzuia wewe na mimi tusimuone Mungu. On the 21st of April katika tarehe 21 ya mwezi wa 4 the same year mwaka huo huo something happened to me kuna jambo lilitokea and i was taken na nikachukuliwa by an angel of god na malaika wa Mungu like uh, it was like a, the angel was like an eagle uh, malaika alikuwa ni kama tai big like a flight kubwa kama ndege vile like a plane kama ndege ya irukayo inayobeba abiria akiwa na mabao makubwa and i was holding his hand na alikuwa nimeshika mikono yake and we went to heaven na tukaenda mbinguni when we reached there tulipofika i was screaming nilikuwa napiga kelele i was crying nilikuwa nalia take me away from this place niondoe hapa niondoe hapa remember this was after the visitation kumbuka hii ilikuwa ni baada ya kutembelewa and for the whole week i was just praying i was just in tongues na kwa wiki nzima nilikuwa nikiomba tunikiomba kwa Mungu. When I reached the standard of heaven. Lakini nilipofika kiwango cha mbinguni. When I reached the standard. Nilipofika viwango. Of God. Ya Mungu. I start screaming. Nikaanza kupiga kelele. I am a sinner. Mimi ni mwenye dhambi. Remove me from here. Niondoe hapa. You see Job. Unaona Ayubu. Throughout he was justifying himself. Wakati wote alikuwa akijihesabia haki. And the Bible says that he was a man of integrity. Na Biblia inasema alikuwa ni mtu to the standard of this earth. Mwenye kujiheshimu kwa viwango hivi vya ulimwengu. Lakini nani awezaye kusimama mbele ya utukufu wa Mungu? Katika viwango vya Mungu. No man is holy. Hakuna aliye mtakatifu. Yeye pekee. He is holy. Ndiye mtakatifu. Ndiye mtakatifu. Ndiye mtakatifu. Ndiye mtakatifu. The last chapter of Job. Sura ya mwisho ya Ayubu. When he saw the glory of God. Alipouona utukufu wa Mungu. He said I am a sinful man. Akasema mimi ni mtu mwenye dhambi. Na katubu. And after then. Na baada ya hapo. God. God. Mungu forgave him. Akamsamehe. God. Mungu restored him. Akamrejesha. God. Mungu I mean bless him back. Akambariki tena. And this is the year we are talking about mm. these things. Na huu ndio mwaka ambao tunayazungumza haya. Once you step in re- true repentance. Maana utakapoingia katika toba ya kweli. You will experience the remission of sins. Basi utapata ondoleo la dhambi. You will experience the reconciliation with God and with people. Utapata upatanisho na Mungu na watu. Remember Job had prayed for his his friends. Kumbuka Ayubu aliomba kwa rafiki zake. And they re- reconciled na ili waweze kupatana kupatanishwa alafu utapata kurudi katika hali yako ya kwanza na utarejeshwa alafu utajengwa tena alafu utathawabiwa katika sura moja katika sura ya mwisho ya maisha yake haya yote yalitokea nataka nikwambie haujachelewa sijui ya kwako Sijui ni miaka mingapi umekaa katika huduma. Unaweza kusema sasa ni mzee. Nywele tayari zimekuwa nyeupe. Lakini sura ya mwisho inakuja. 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 After God removes you baada ya Mungu kukutengeneza upya na kukupa tena sura mpya ya tabia yako atarudisha baraka zote na mali zote. Hallelujah. 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 And God rewarded him. Na Mungu akamthawabia. With 140 years. Miaka 140. To live again. Kuishi tena. And he had seven sons and three daughters. Na alikuwa na wana saba na mabinti watatu. These three daughters Mabinti hao watatu walikuwa warembo mno kuliko mabinti wote ili tu aweze aweze kumpa thawabu na amfanye asikie vizuri hapo na mali zote they came back zikarudi twice mara mbili twice mara mbili twice mara mbili if your greatness is in your heart kama uku wako huu moyoni mwako people may take your blessing watu wanaweza kuchukua baraka zako oh, it is just an investment ah 
ni wekezaji. It will just come back with interest. Itarudi tena pamoja na riba. Hebu sema amina. Whatever you have lost. Chochote ulichopoteza. Ye miaka yote. That has been eaten by locusts. Ambayo imeiliwa na mzige. Shetani anafikiri amekuangamiza. Ilikuwa ni uwekezo tu. This is the time they are coming back with interest. Huni wakati vinarudi na riba. When they kill Jesus. Walipomua Yesu. They thought that they have finished him. Walifikiri wamemaliza. But guess what? Lakini unafikiri nini? After three days, Baada ya siku tatu. Akainuka tena. Akainuka tena. Akarudi tena. The year of rebuilding. Mwaka wa kujengwa upya. This is the year of rebuilding. Huu ni mwaka wa kujenga upya. He was cast at the tree. Aliangikwa pale mti. Naked. Uchi. Beaten. Akipigwa. All those people who were clapping hands for him. Wote walikuwa wakimpigia makofi. And they were crying crucify him. Na wanasema msulubishe huyo, msulubishe huyo. Guess what? Lakini unafikiri nini? Oh hallelujah. Oh hallelujah. Even those who were criticizing Job. Hata wale walikuwa wakimshutumu Abu. All the people who have left him. Watu wote waliomwacha. After he has seen the resurrection of God. Baada ya kuona urejesho wake. My Bible says that they came back. Biblia yangu inasema alirudi. And they were giving him gifts. Na wakao wanampa zawadi. The other half. Blessing baraka When God is with you Mungu anapokuwa na wewe Even those who left you Hata wale walikuacha They will come back Watarudi They will come back Watarudi And you will forgive them Na utawasamehe Because you are a great man Kwa sababu wewe ni mtu mkuu Not because of your possessions Sio kwa sababu ya mali zako But the greatness of heart Lakini ukuu wa moyo This is your riches huu ndio utajiri wako ambao ulimwengu hauwezi kugundua waweza tu kuja kutoka kwa Mungu pigie bwana Yesu makofi even when you are suffering hata unapoteseka you say god why unasema mungu kwa nini uh, don't say why again usiseme kwa nini tena say yes i'm ready sema ndio niko tayari because i know kwa sababu najua the glory of the life wa nyumba ya baadaye utakuwa mkubwa kuliko ule Jesus Christ Yesu Kristo He came back alirudi with a new body na mwili mpya body of glory mwili wa utukufu to touch him as they used to do walitaka kumshika kama walivyokuwa wakifanya akasema tafadhali subiri 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 I need to go nahitaji kwenda kwa na kumuona kwanza na kutoa taarifa may come back Ninaweza rudi tena. Yes. Ndio. Whatever you do after. Chochote utakachofanya baadaye tayari umeshakuwa baada ya kuwa umeshakuwa umeumbwa upya. He is the only one. Yeye ndiye pekee. Ndio wa muhimu zaidi. After you have reported to him. Baada ya kuwa umetoa taarifa kwake. Sasa unaweza kurudi kwa watu ukasema Mungu awabariki. Mungu akubariki dada. So I screamed. Kwa hiyo nikapiga kelele. I say who? Oh. Nikasema eh hey, Take me far from this place. na hapa. We want to go to heaven. Tunataka kwenda mbinguni. Lakini ngoja nikwambie. Mbingu has own standard. Ina viwango vyake. It has its own standard. Ina viwango vyake. I not I don't I, I don't believe that God will push people. Mimi siamini ya kama Mungu atawasukumia watu. Not enter heaven. Kwamba wasiingie mbinguni. I don't believe in that. Siamini. After that experience. Baada ya kupata uzoefu. Remember uzefu. myself I was asking that they should remove me from that place quickly Urajua. because I could feel that I was dying. Hata mimi nilikuwa naomba waniondoe haraka kwa sababu nilikuwa najisikia ninakufa. No one will push you. Hakuna atakayekusukuma. Because God loves us. Kwa sababu Mungu anatupenda. Let me tell you. Lakini ngoja nikwambie. Uchafu wako mwenyewe. It will just make you feel like. Mm. Utakufanya mm. tu wewe mwenyewe mm. ujisikia. Mm. Uh, mm. 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 Just imagine the white carpet. Hebu fikiria kuhusu lile zuri ya geu. Na unakuja na viatu vina matofu. Okay, karibu. Alafu wanasema welcome. Karibu. Welcome. You come. Unakuja. When you see that white carpet. Ukiona hilo zuri ya geupe. Jamani. Wewe mwenyewe. Subiri kidogo. You yourself say wait a bit. Subiri kidogo. Wait a bit. Subiri kidogo. Wait a bit. Then you go out. Unatoka nje. You remove those shoes. Unavua viatu. And then you come again. Alafu unakuja tena. God said we should remove our shoes. Mungu alisema tuvue viatu vyetu. We should remove our shoes. Tuvue viatu vyetu. Before we approach his majesty. Kabla hatujaenda katika ukuu wake. We should remove our shoes. Tuvue viatu. He told Moses. Alimwambia Musa. He came for Moses. Alikuja kwa ajili ya Musa. I love God. He came for Moses. Mungu. Alikuja kwa ajili ya Musa. Moses approached. Lakini Musa okay. aliposogelea karibu akasema ah Ne, I want you to come but I don't want you to come in that way. Akasema hapo hapo nataka uje lakini sitaki uje ulivyo. 
hapo kuna kuaga na protokali kule mbinguni kuna utaratibu wa kufuatwa kule mbinguni mbele jirani yako kule mbinguni kuna protokali remove your shoes vua viatu vyako because this ground is holy maana hapo ulipo ni patakatifu in heaven it's holiness and holiness and holiness kule mbinguni ni utakatifu 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 and as i was screaming na nilipokuwa nikipiga kelele i heard nikasikia i heard a voice nikasikia sauti saying kisema why are you screaming in this place kwa nini unapiga kelele hapa in heaven they don't scream mbinguni hawapigi kelele is here on earth that we are suffering you can say eh eh ni hapa duniani tunapiga kelele kwa sababu ya mateso lakini huku mbinguni hakuna hiyo waka stushwa Why are you screaming like that? Kwa nini unapiga kelele hivyo? Why don't you call upon the blood of Jesus? Kwa nini usiitie damu ya Yesu? Because I was feeling like in in, in two seconds I'll be dead already. Kwa sababu nilikuwa najisikia katika dakika mbili sekunde mbili nitakuwa so nimekufa. Kwa hiyo waliposema hivyo I wanted to you to save my life quickly. Nilitaka kuokoa maisha yangu kwa haraka. Because kwa sababu if something did not happen kama jambo lisingetokea nilikuwa mtu aliyekufa before the sentence was over kabla ile sentence haijaisha nikaita damu ya Yesu damu ya Yesu damu ya Yesu damu ya Yesu no man will be righteous without the blood hakuna mtu anaweza kuwa mwenye haki pasipo kuwa na damu you can be religious unaweza kuwa mwenye dini you can be a servant of God unaweza kuwa mtumishi wa Mungu Taja. without the blood pasipo damu no one can be justified hakuna mtu awezaye kuhesabiwa haki i call the blood kwa hiyo nikaitia damu damu ya mwana kondoo na ghafla nikajisikia nimekubalika nikajisikia kukubalika nikaanza kumwabudu Mungu nikaanza kumwabudu Mungu nikaanza kumwabudu Mungu what a nice place ni mahali pazuri nice place. Place. ni mahali pazuri mno ulimwengu huu is nothing si kitu na nitakwambia nimeenda kwenye nchi nyingi nimeenda nchi nyingi sana when i went to europe i went to asia i went to many countries of africa ulaya asia nchi nyingi za afrika i was saying maybe america will be nikasema pengine marekani itakuwa nzuri siku ya kwanza nimefika marekani washington dc washington dc my eyes were wide open macho yangu yalikuwa yamefunguka kwa sababu nitaka nione the color of the sky in america rangi ya mawingu kule marekani nitaka kuona the color of houses rangi ya nyumba the street <coughs> mita kwa sababu nilikuwa nasikia watu wanasema Marekani ndio kila kitu kuna barabara like nyumba ni kama mbinguni kwa hiyo nilikuwa najaribu nisubiri nione landed, Nde, like ndege ilipotua macho yalikuwa wazi so na nikastushwa Washington DC airport kwenye uwanja wa ndege wa airport. Washington I looked na ikatazama and I saw The land was dry. Nikaona ardhi ilikuwa kavu. I said, eh? Kasema, eh? Nafikiri ni huko Moshi au I thought I was in Moshi. I said, eh. And then I saw containers. Alafu nikaona ma container. Old old containers. Ma container ya zamani. They were not even painted. Hata hayakupaka rangi ya nakutu. I, in those I think in that year they were repairing Dallas airport. Nafikiri mwaka huo walikuwa wanafanya ukarabati kwenye uwanja wa ndege wa Dallas. Kwa hiyo walikuwa wanaona mawaya, nini vitu vingi tu ghasia nyingi. Alafu nikasema Oh. Ah. If America is like this. Kama Marekani ndio hivi. I went to Europe. Nimeenda Ulaya. I was not 